And as we continue this last day of Cybus 2021, we can, of course, look ahead to some of the highlights still to come. But first, let's review some of yesterday's key moments. Joining us to do that, joining us to do that is Wana Ifrim, lead editor at the papers, and for the final time this year, this week, Heather McKenzie is with us. She's a reporter for Cybos Issues. Welcome, both. Hello, hello. Hey. Hello, thanks for having me. Good morning. morning. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to start with yourself, Wana. Um, there was a session you had your eye on about financial inclusion. Tell us, what did you take away from that? Uh, well, there were quite a few good ideas th uh, that were discussed yesterday during, during this session. And I think the key one for me is actually the idea that everyone is now looking into ways to tackle financial inclusion and bringing in new initiatives in this respect. And I think in terms of progress, um, I think that first of all, it's fantastic to see that financial institutions um, uh, and financial inclusion is at the very heart of banks, especially with COVID-19 acting as a catalyst for this. And I think it's no surprise that the pandemic especially impacted vulnerable groups, including seg segments that are already uh, lim uh, have limited access to financial services and resources, such as women, low-wage workers, and uh, SMEs. But we also noticed here at the papers that governments, financial institutions, um, association, private segments, they all have a critical role in addressing uh, the social economic impact of COVID-19. We've seen governments uh, responded to crisis by providing funds to citizens through digital channels. Uh, we also seen uh, social protect protection measures in place. Uh, many countries using ID systems and digital payments to provide um, uh, uh, transfer directly into bank accounts or mobile wallets. So, um, as uh, in the session yesterday regarding financial inclusion, uh, Marion King from NatWest actually uh, made a very good point. She mentioned that the pandemic actually has accelerated um, the shift towards a more digital world and trigger challenges in the in the online shopping behaviors. She mentioned that in the UK, uh, particularly 95% of the uh, adults uh, have started uh, transacting via the, via the internet with online shopping. And she also made a very good point that the digital and financial go hand in hand now. So we're no longer talking about financial inclusion, but digital inclusion as well. And we need to ensure that everybody can benefit from the digital world. And another interesting point was made by Michelle Swanpool from Standard Chartered. She mentioned that even before the pandemic, African consumers were already starting relying more on their devices, but without a doubt, uh, COVID-19 has caused an acceleration in these behaviors. And actually, during the pandemic, Africa saw a growth uh, of mobile banking platforms, but they have a very young population. 75% of the population uh, are below 35. And um, we also seen some initiative, uh, African governments uh, starting releasing stimulus grants via mobile money platforms, uh, central banks starting to ease regulations on mobile transaction limits and so on and so forth. So you see, we've seen a growth in Africa of mobile banking platforms. However, what we noticed, and, uh, and Marion King made, made a good point, elderly, vulnerable families with lower incomes or those with additional needs are not currently financially included. And that's, that's where the focus needs to be from now on. But there's also another segment and specifically those that are basically afraid to access digital services. And um, a very interesting point that Marion King made was the fact that we, we are currently seeing uh, a double pandemic happening, another pandemic in parallel to the COVID-19 pandemic, mm. uh, and is the fraud pandemic. Uh, she mentioned that in the UK, uh, scams doubled during the pandemic and fraud has reached um, uh, record levels during the pandemic. Well, no, that's that's and, fascinating. Uh, yeah, um, um, let me just bring Heather in here, um, if I may. Um, Heather, you watched that session too. Now, it's a regular topic of discussion at Cybos. What progress do you think has been made on financial inclusion? Um, I think Ina's oh, really covered it really well. Actually, the whole the whole um, session. I don't <laughs> I don't really think I've got much more to add. Um, <laughs> one of the interesting things we've mentioned Marion King a lot. Um, she did it's sort of an anecdotal uh, story, which I thought was quite interesting. Was that during lockdown, 
Um, uh, NatWiz partnered with a security company and they distributed more than £2 million in cash to, um, as I was uh, mentioning, the elderly, vulnerable people um, and those without internet access. So I thought that was quite uh, just how banks kind of mobilised during the pandemic just to make sure that, you know, people people would not be financially excluded. But, yeah, obviously um, still lots to do there. Mm. Fascinating. Thank you very much. And Wana, coming back to yourself, it's the last day of Cybos today and there's been an awful lot of content packed in so far. Reflecting on the event as a whole, what sessions and themes stood out as being very significant to you? Well, that's, uh, that's really hard to choose, actually. But I think uh, if we look at the, the main themes, the main topics, and some of the topics that we hear at the papers are very much focused on, I think uh, the first one is, of course, SWIFT uh, ISO 2022, mm. which, is, uh, which is a key topic and, uh, for, for cross-border payments. And uh, it's, inter it's interesting to see what, would, what are the steps that uh, institutions need to take to make this journey a success. And uh, I was also very pleased to see that uh, there was a lot of focus on digitalization and uh, the risks that, uh, that come with, uh, with it. And also to see that central banks are now very much focused on, on, uh, on topics such as, such as financial inclusion, innovation, improving cross-border payments, but also, I don't know, um, climate, change, climate change and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And uh, apart from that, I think, and I think this is, this is a very, very hot topic right now, the ado adoption of uh, central bank digital currencies. I think that, that's, a, that's a key topic um, yeah. discussed at Cybos. And we see that um, many central banks are now um, actively exploring uh, their use. Wanna, yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, and Heather, can, I, can I bring you back here in, um, you've been with us every day this week, so what are some of your highlights across the four days you've seen are? Um, I quite like, as a freelancer and someone who works from home and who wasn't really madly affected by the lockdowns, um, I thought there were some really good discussions about the nature of work, and particularly from uh, Noel Quinn of HSBC on the first day, sort of saying that banks trusted their staff to work from home and to get the job done and, and that, you know, the idea of forcing people back to work wasn't a great idea. So we're looking at a future of hybrid working. And also the see this afternoon I'm looking forward to seeing Mark Carney, who's the closing mm -hmm. um, in the closing plenary and he'll be talking about climate yeah, change. Yeah. So big big issue. He'll be fascinating. Heather McKenzie and Wana Ifrim, thank you so much for joining Cybos TV.